So, we know we have the system. We know the K. We know the concentration at equilibrium for one of them. So, set up your K expression. So what is our K expression equal to? You need to know how to do this. Victoria? 3.3 times 10 to the negative 12. 3.3 times 10 to the negative 12. Equals the concentration of N2. Another bracket concentration of chlorine with the exponent group. All over concentration of NCl3 to the exponent 2. Okay. So there is our K expression. Do you know what the square brackets mean? Concentration. concentration, okay. All right, so there we go. There's our K expression. But we don't know how to solve for the others. What do you think you should probably set up? Ice An ice table. It's slow. <laughs> okay, so we need a nice table. Okay. So, if we have an ice table, I'll do it over here. Do we know how much initially we have of NCl3? No. Do we? NCl3, do we know how much we have initially? So we have some amount, right? Some amount, what should we call it? We can't say it's at x because we change is our x. Change is x, so we can't call the initial amount x. Y? WHI or? Okay, so y is our initial amount. I know, it took me a minute. I'm like, why? What do you mean? I know, I'm like, what? Why? Like, as in, why do we need to have a different. I'm like, what? Okay. Normally, we don't use letters that are actual words. I thought A or Z. Okay, what is the change for NCL3? Minus 2x. What is uh, N2? And then CL2? Okay. So at equilibrium, we have some amount, minus 2x, x, and 3x. Are we trying to find the initial concentration of NCl3? Yes, you are. This, you are, right? Okay. So, do you want to plug these values in? No, not really. What do we know? What do we already know? We already know what our value of x is. This is n2, and n2 is equal to that. So we know what our value for x is. So y minus 2 times 4.6 times 10 to the negative 6. And then we've got 4.6 times 10 to the negative 6. And we've got 3 times x. 1.3 times 10 to the negative 5. 
Thank you. All right. So now you're going to plug those in and solve for y. So, three point three times ten to the negative twelve is equal to four point six times ten to the negative six times one point three eight times ten to the negative five cubed all over y minus 2x, oh, 2x, no, y minus 9.2 times 10 to the negative 6, all squared. Is we're going to assume y minus 9.2 times 10 to the negative 6 is approximately y. And that is because our k value is so small that y over our k is probably much greater than 1,000. We don't know yet, but we're going to figure it out. Yep. If, if, you, if you do it in the method, like, so you didn't make this on your work still, like... Well, you could do all the work. You will get the right answer, but it's a whole lot of work. Okay? So, that makes our life a little less complicated. So now, you've got 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative 12 equal to some really small number on the top. Over y squared. What is the top? 4.6 times 10 to the negative 6 times 1.3 times 10 to the negative 5. Anybody? times 10 to the, I get 1.2 times 10 to the negative 20. Yeah. Close? I didn't hear. I heard a 9. So now, bring y2 up. Take the 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative 12. Take it down. And find the square root of both sides. And you've got your y. So y squared is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the negative 20 divided by 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative 12. Take the square root of both sides. All right, so what I want you to do, set up your K expression and set up your ice table. How far did you get? I wrote my um, K expression out, and that's when I did the ice table, wrote my K expressions, and then when I put the numbers in, I messed up something. Okay.
Did you get that? Okay. Can we make that assumption? Yeah. It's going to be a massive, massive number. Take 1.18 and divide it by 1.43 times 10 to the negative 26. Your answer is not is larger than a thousand, right? Just by a few zeros. So this says assume one point one eight minus two x is approximately equal to one point one eight because when you take this number divided by this number, it's very much greater than a thousand. Like if, the more chevrons you put in, the larger the value is. is that so if there? no, okay. no. So it's way bigger than a thousand. So now you've got one point four three times ten to the negative twenty six equal to four x squared times x. What's 4x squared times x? 4x cubed over 1.18 squared. Honestly, where a lot of students make the mistake is here in some basic math, not squaring the 2 and making it 4 or not remembering to square this. So now, bring up the 1.18 Divide both sides by 4, and then find the cubed root of both sides, and you will have your x. Yes. So now that you have your x, go back to your e-line, plug it in, and you've got your equilibrium concentrations. When we write equilibrium concentrations, you put in EQ. And that just basically explains that that is your concentration at equilibrium. So, sometimes... We are given a system and, ladies and gentlemen, and we are asked is the system at equilibrium? B what direction will it shift to achieve equilibrium? Okay. So we set up something called the reaction quotient. It's a trial K. And we're going to call it a Q. This is your 
reaction quotient. And it is a trial K. What you do is you compare it. What? We compare it. to our known K value, you have to know your K in order to make a prediction. What is K equal to? Products over reactants. So what will Q have to be in order to compare it to our K? products over reactants. In order to compare two things to make a decision, they have to be similar. It's a trial K. Okay, so what do you think if Q is equal to K, is the system at equilibrium? Yes. That means we have two other options for Q. Q is either greater than K and Q is less than K. So if Q is greater than K, what can you say about our pro quantities of our products and reactants? You have too much of what? Too much reactants or too much products? Think about the math you're doing. Too much product. Because the number, when you divide it, is bigger than your K. If you've got too many products, which way will it shift to achieve equilibrium? It's going to go left. It wants to use them up. Guess what you just did? You just used the chandelier's principle. Uh -huh. Yay! He's like, okay. Okay, so if the system has a Q value that's smaller than K, so if this is smaller than that, what do you have too much of? Reactants, because this number, that's a big number, that means Q is small. So, that means we don't have enough products, so the system will shift. Right. You just used Le Chandelier's principle again. Yay. Okay. So, you take your Q, which is the same as your K expression, plug in your values. Take your Q value, compare it to your K, and you make a decision based on how it compares to the K. This is the formula for molar concentration. Okay, so C is molar concentration, and the units are? Moles per liter. When you go to university, depending on the age of your professor, <laughs> they'll talk about a, instead of saying 0 0.01 mole per liter, and I, it's been about three years now and I'm starting to get over what I want to say. So it's 0 0.01 moles per liter. That's molar concentration. They talk about molarity. So you might see that. We got another M. Okay, but that, when you see 0 
If you're talking concentrations and they give you a value, points, whatever, and then a big M, that means moles per liter. These are the same thing. You know what? I have a feeling they probably use big M. Well, I hate those teachers.